we got funding last year to do it uh, via snow machine and it got approved by our compliance team but then sequestration hit and we canceled the patrol. As 2014 rolled around this was the 50th anniversary of the Wilderness Act so we started looking to see if we couldn't use a wilderness friendly method of retrieving the barrels. That's one of the parts of this job that I really enjoy the most is the discovery and the problem solving and the creative solutions that we need to come up with to accomplish these projects with the minimum tool. These sled dogs are not only our minimum tool, but they're also the traditional tool for travel in Alaska. Somehow the dogs start disappearing after a snow machine start coming, you know. Everybody start taking care of, trying to take care of the snow machine more than dogs. Everybody, what happened to all the dogs? And, well, these are our dogs out there, and, you know, they would point at the snow machine. Anytime we can accomplish a project with sled dogs, we're keeping alive the history and the tradition that's so much a part of Alaska. We traveled with Gates of the Arctic staff and they were several days ahead of us on snow machines breaking trail. After several days of dog team travel, we finally met up with our snow machines and followed them with our dog teams right up to the wilderness boundary. Our motorized transport is not allowed. Their staff, thankfully, had snowshoed in a trail already for us. And I, I wasn't sure how the dogs were going to handle the transition from a really nice, wide, well-packed snow machine trail back to a pretty narrow, soft snowshoe trail. I think in some ways they were relieved and excited to be back on a, a familiar trail of snowshoes powered by humans. They jumped right on it and ears forward, ready to go. Using the metal detector, we found all seven barrels. Several were in deep snow. We got out um, all but one due to not trying to tear up the tundra too bad. We hooked up the teams, we loaded up the barrels, and we headed out from May Lake with the full moon guiding our way. It was bright enough that we really didn't need headlamps, which means the dogs always want to run faster. They love running at night in the dark. The northern lights were dancing overhead. Felt like traveling in a dream. about 12.30 and we just lost the trail. Snow came and swept over it last night. Jen's, uh, Jen's completely off, Scott's looking, looking for the route. As we mushed the dog teams into town, I think the most striking moment was to watch the elders lining the streets and cheering us on with a very, very knowing look in their eyes. They have strong memories of their own experiences with dogs on the trail. Dog was just like uh, you. you. You have to take care of them like you, yourself. Because without them, we'd never survive. Right as soon as I entered, they were screaming and waving. Uh, we turned a corner in town by the ranger station and an, an elder was like cheering us on. A young boy ran out and ran along my dog teams. The other part of it was kids running along with just this fascination and the enthusiasm for something so new and different coming into town. Of course, they were curious just to understand more of how does a dog team work. So we talked through the different positions in the team and the kids were really eager to actually be sled dogs themselves. So they all grabbed the tug lines and started pulling on the sled. And one of the rangers hopped on the back of the sled and the kids were pulling him around the streets of town. The highlight too was also sharing the experience with the people in Anaktuvik, um, having the community meeting showing them that we're cleaning up their backyard. Using traditional means, sled dogs, still today to do projects. Something they've been using for generations.
don't think there's ever a time that I feel more silenced and stilled on the trail than listening to the dogs howl at night or howl in the middle of the day for reasons that are beyond my knowledge, um, but knowing that they're connecting to something bigger out there, something wilder than us. For a park visitor, they think it's kind of crazy that we'll go out for weeks at a time in winter when it's dark and it's cold, it's 50 below, there's howling winds and blowing snow. They look at us and say, why would you do that? And to explain to them that we do it in honor of the wilderness character of this place. <laughs>